Last month, American Honda announced the return of several popular models, including the Africa Twin and Africa Twin Adventure Sports, and we have a few refinements for those in 2022. Today, we're going to cover 10 things you need to know. Hello everyone, I am Mike and welcome to New Bike Mike where I like to share information about new bikes that I find interesting. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this in the future then please remember to hit the subscribe. After all, it is free. Honda of Europe announced the Africa Twin for Europe several months ago and there were no real surprises for the US version other than we get less color options. A few months ago I got to take the Harley Davidson Pan America out for an afternoon and of course that was a big change for my 2006 Suzuki DR650 Dual Sport. Since then I've really been dying to ride some of the big competitors to that bike like the Africa Twin. Having two Honda dealerships within 30 minutes of me, I think that getting a chance to ride a Honda Africa Twin is a lot more likely than say riding a BMW GS1250 Adventure since the nearest BMW dealer is over 2 hours away. Let's get into the updates first. 1. DCT For 2022, the Africa Twin gets a control program change for smoother engagement in first and second gears. As I understand it, this should improve slow speed maneuvers for the bike. I rode the Honda Rebel 1100 DCT and actually put the DCT through what I felt was a pretty good test of slow speed maneuvers and I found it did very well. So I'm assuming this was an issue that was specific to the Africa Twins gearing, but either way, it's good to see that it's been improved. 2. Rear Rack The standard version of the Africa Twin now gets the same rear carrier as the Adventure Sports version had as standard equipment. Grant, this is not a big thing, but getting it as standard is a plus and I'm sure that most people were wishing it was there the minute they left the dealership and need to tie something down on the back. 3. Windscreen the Adventure Sports version gets a shorter windshield for improved visibility in 2022. The previous version I guess could be difficult to look over in the lowest setting and if it got covered in mud or dirt it obstructed your view. So this is probably a good change and since it's adjustable and has 5 positions you should still be able to raise it up enough for wind protection when you need it. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Africa Twin and want to know more I'm going to go ahead and go over the specs, colors and pricing. 4. Engine Two years ago, Honda introduced a bigger capacity, longer stroke, 1,084cc engine to replace the 1,000cc version previously in the Africa Twin. This new engine offered stronger performance and it produced 7% more peak power and 6% more peak torque and had a much greater strength everywhere throughout the rev range resulting in producing 100 peak horsepower and 77 peak foot pounds of torque. The single overhead cam 8 valve parallel twin engine has a variable exhaust control valve and 10.1 to 1 compression with aluminum cylinder sleeves designed to save weight. It's a semi dry sump design with in tank lower crankcase oil storage. This allows for a lower pan depth that keeps the overall engine height low. You can choose between a 6 speed manual gearbox or Honda's dual clutch transmission for either model and you'll find it has chain final drive. 5. Chassis and Suspension This second generation of Africa Twin features a steel frame that is almost 4 pounds lighter than the earlier models. In principle, it's similar to the design they use on the CRF 450R Rally Factory Dakar race bike. The Africa Twin swing arm is light and strong because it uses technology developed from the CRF 450R also. The aluminum subframe is removable to aid in servicing and repairs in addition to saving weight as well. The Adventure Sport model has an electric preload adjuster which has four settings. Solo, Solo with luggage, Two up, Two up with luggage. This model is also equipped with Showa electronically controlled suspension. You can choose between 5 suspension dampening settings, hard, medium, soft and off-road as well as a customizable user setting. The front suspension is a 45mm inverted telescopic fork with 9.1 inches of travel and the rear suspension is a ProLink system with a single shock and 8.7 inches of travel. The suspension on the Pan America Special I rode was really good. So I would really like to try one of these Hondas with the electronically controlled suspension to see how it compares. 6. Wheels and Tires Not any surprise here, as all Africa Twin models feature a 21 inch front and an 18 inch rear, which is what you really want to see on a bike that is designed for off-road riding. Tubeless tires are standard on the Adventure Sport ES models. Tubeless tires run cooler and there's a greater selection of adventure bike rubber available today for them. Flat tire repairs are also a lot easier to do with tubeless tires. 7. Brakes Up front, the Africa Twin features twin 4-piston brake calipers on 310mm disc for powerful braking performance. The radial mount design also helps make them stiffer, 
increasing brake feel and control. In the rear, your typical single one piston caliper on a 256 millimeter disc. Eight, size. Weight is always a concern on these big adventure touring models. We all want to take them off road, but the heavier the bike, the more challenging that can be. The Africa Twin is 505 pounds for the manual version and 529 for the DCT. The Africa Twin Adventure Sports jumps to 529 pounds ready to ride. The DCT option adds 22 pounds to top it out at 551 pounds. Part of this weight gain is due to the Adventure Sports model getting an upgrade from a 5 gallon gas tank to a 6.5 gallon tank. Honda made special efforts to keep the Africa Twin seat narrow. That makes it easier to move around on the bike and also makes it easier to get a foot on the ground at stoplights or in parking lots. Standard seat height is 34.3 inches with a low position of 33.5. In addition to the aluminum subframe being removable, Honda narrowed it by 40 millimeters over the original design. That helps keep the whole bike feeling narrower and more nimble. Honda even gave the Africa Twin a high-tech, lightweight lithium-ion battery. Compared with the similar lead-acid battery, it holds a charge approximately four times longer, and its shelf life is 1.6 times longer, and these batteries are way lighter. This is an upgrade I see a lot of people making to save weight after they bought a bike. It's nice to see Honda making this move and providing these lighter batteries as standard equipment. 9. Tech Both manual transmission and DCT models offer 6 riding modes. Tour, Urban, Gravel, Off-Road, User 1, and User 2. The last two let you customize the system to your individual preference. We get wheelie control, where a front and rear wheel speed sensor working with Honda's selectable torque control lets you dial in three levels of wheelie control. There's also an off position when you want complete control without intervention. With Honda's selectable torque control, you can dial in the kind of power delivery you want for the conditions at hand. Honda's selectable torque control features seven settings for a wide range of conditions from pavement to fast, loose fire roads to challenging single tracks. And again, this is another feature that you can turn off off completely. Selectable ABS on the Africa Twin model offers two ABS modes, on-road and off-road. A third setting lets you turn rear ABS off altogether for riding in the dirt. I really like that Honda allows many of these rider aids to be turned off for the advanced rider that wants complete control aspects of managing the bike. Honda even gives you cornering anti-lock brake standard and it's managed by a six axis IMU. It knows when you're leaned over and it compensates accordingly when braking. Cruise control is standard as well, making those touring adventures where you want to travel hundreds of miles even more comfortable. We also find a six and a half inch touch panel LCD multi-information dash display. You can choose between three displays too, depending on how much information you want to see at once. The display is highly customizable and you can even set up favorites to make certain information or settings more accessible. I've seen some feedback in the past that some folks find this to be overly complicated. I haven't got to try one out yet, so I would like to know in the comments if you have and what your thoughts are on it. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are integrated and that means that you can use your devices to access maps, music, and other services easily. You'll have access to weather, playlists, and telephone numbers as well. 10. Colors and Pricing for colors, we get the Africa Twin Adventure Sports SE in pearl white and the Africa Twin in Grand Prix red. Told you we get fewer color options. In Europe, I think the Adventure Sport had two color options and the base model Africa Twin had three options. Let's talk pricing. The Africa Twin Adventure Sports ES DCT is $18,099. The Africa Twin Adventure Sports ES is $17,299. The Africa Twin DCT is $15,299. And the cheapest option is the Africa Twin at $14,499. Now let me know, which of these models would you pick and why? Don't forget to like the video. It really helps the channel grow and subscribe if you want to see more videos from New Bike Mike. Thanks guys, see you in the next one.